Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to um, do a uh, video, you know, uh, because um, when I did the video yesterday, uh, you know, in regards to, you know, Elijah, John the Baptist, Abba Bivens, um, high priest Abba Bivens, when I came to this part in the book of uh, Sirach, the 48th chapter, um, in the 13th verse, as it says, no word could overcome him. Okay. And after his death, his body prophesied. You know, I pose the question now, what does this mean? And, um, you know, the uh, beloved brother, St. Benji, all right, the, uh, the elder from the Chicago camp, he hit me with this scripture, all right, which that's why iron sharpens iron. And um, I'm going to show you, all right, in the book of 2 Kings, the 13th chapter. And I remember this, but sometimes we do these lessons. There's particular things that may slip our minds, um, slips of the tongue, that happens. All right, but um, let's edify on that point. Although we know he rose again, when you get 2 Kings, the 13th chapter, this actually could be a faith builder as well. Alluding to the fact that we can have particular people raised from the dead. All right. This is uh, 2 Kings, the 13th chapter and the 20th verse. And Elisha died. Now, Elisha was the understudy of Elijah. And we know that, you know, he begged for a double portion. All right. Of Elijah's spirit. Okay. So Elijah's spirit was on him. You know, after Elijah translated you know, his spirit was on him. So it says, and Elisha died and buried and, and they buried him and the bands of the Moabites invaded the land and coming at the coming in of the year. All right. And to show you that the new year is the spring, when you look over in the uh, NLT, it says that the Moabites raided. All right. Raiders used to invade the land each spring. Right, so the spring is the beginning of the year. Anyway, it says, and it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And he went and when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. So that the dead man. When he, when that dead body touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Showing you, we have a legacy of people raising from the dead, right? We ain't seen nothing yet. But ultimately, that's what this is uh, alluding to in um, Sirach the uh, 13th chapter or the 48th chapter in the 13th, 14th verse. Let me see here. Sirach 48. And started 12. Elijah, it was, who was covered with a whirlwind, you know, the chariot. And Elisha was filled with his spirit. While he lived, he was not moved with the presence of any prince, neither could anything bring him into subjection. And Elisha is his understudy. No word could overcome him. And after his death, his body prophesied. That's actually speaking of Elisha. All right, but it was through the spirit of Elijah. Also, when you go to uh, verse 7, when it says, Who heard us the rebuke? of the Lord in Sinai and in Oreb, the judgment of vengeance. And I remember in the lesson, I was sort of mulling on that. What, what, what did that mean? But that actually goes back to, I believe, 2 Kings 19. Let's get it. Let's just type in Sinai. Let's see. S-I-N. Let's 
Let's get First Kings or Second Kings, the nineteenth chapter. Let's see here. Hold up. Let's see if I can look it up here. I forget exactly where it is, but it's uh. second here. Uh, the cave of Elijah and Mount Sinai. Yep, 1 Kings 19. There we go. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. All right, Elijah flees to Sinai. So you can read that, you know, you can read that history there. So, I just wanted to make those few corrections and uh, edify on that. Hopefully I edified. Let's see here. On to the next. Shalom.